am a third culture kid, so I'm not exactly from one place, where I think we started from about five people and grew to 25. We work with SMEs in Dubai. Too often I see entrepreneurs just spend a lot of money on the upfront without actually just doing the work. Hey guys, welcome to Oxy Vlogs. Today, so many young entrepreneurs want to move to Dubai, live this beautiful lifestyle, work as a freelancer or run their own agency, but they don't know what is the best way to do it. So in this episode, I'm gonna interview my guest. She will share her story, how she moved to Dubai, how she was working as a freelancer, and now she's running her own digital marketing agency. So let's get started. Could you introduce yourself in a couple of words? Sure. Uh, so my name is Alina. I am a third culture kid, so I'm not exactly from one place. I'm ethnically Pakistani, but I grew up in Luxembourg, Bahrain, Dubai. Then I was in Canada for 12 years, and then I recently come back. So I've been back now for less than two years. What did you do before you came to Dubai, and why did you decide to come here? So before moving to Dubai, I was living in Toronto, in Canada, and I was working at a health and wellness website where I was the content marketing lead. So it was a startup where I think we started from about five people and grew to 25. And I recently moved back, uh, mostly because of family, because me and my husband both have relatives um, living in and around the region, and we just wanted to be close to them. How did your Dubai journey start, and what's been the biggest change? So my Dubai journey, I guess this is part two of it because I finished high school over here. I was here for a couple of years, but then I went away for 12 years and came back. So the biggest change for me has been the readjustment into Dubai culture. Um, I'm more used to it now again that I've been here for over a year, but definitely when you're living in North America, um, yeah, it's, it's different. You know, I'm definitely used to the four seasons over there, actually having a spring and a fall, um, more exposure to real nature, I suppose, as well. There's many things that are different just in terms of uh, the professional culture over there as well, like the business culture is pretty different over here. It's a bit more laid back, a little bit more inshallah culture. <laughs> um, and in Canada, everything is very principled and on time and efficient um, yeah so those are some of the things that are different what challenges did you face um, I think the biggest challenge for me coming back was sort of the business culture I think just everything operates on a very loose timeline over here and I found that a little bit difficult because I'm very hyper efficient <laughs> and and over here, sometimes when I work with clients, I find I'm so hyper efficient and I could kind of push that onto my clients, but I just have to sort of come to terms with the fact that that's not how business is done here. So you just have to learn to relax a little bit more and be a bit more patient. Was there something like a culture shock to you when you arrived? Uh, surprisingly, I did have reverse culture shock. I thought, because I'm a Middle Eastern kid in a way. I, Bahrain, I lived there for about 10 years and then finished high school here. So, you know, I'm, I'm a Middle East baby. Um, I'm used to this culture and there's things I love about it. But, and so coming back, I thought it would be a breeze for me. But uh, no, I definitely did have a bit of culture shock. A, in work that I've talked about. Uh, B, things like um, talking to strangers, for example, is very different. You don't really talk to strangers over here. Everyone is in their own bubble and in their own zone, which for me was kind of weird getting used to that again, because in Canada you talk to anyone and everyone and you strike up conversations with them, whether you're at a bus stop or, you know, a, I don't use buses here, that's a big difference too. Um, but yeah, you just, there's more openness and friendliness, I, I feel, in Canada. People here are friendly, but once you sort of have to break the barrier and, and, and get to know them a bit too. Um, other differences, definitely driving here is a whole other skill set that I've, you know, had to learn. I drove in Canada, but it's, it's a little bit tougher over here. Um, but yeah, those are, those are some of the things. Otherwise, I feel like I reacclimatized back to the culture pretty quickly. 
What do you dislike about living in Dubai? Traffic fines. It's really, really hard to avoid them. Um, the extreme heat, of course, in the summer. Lack of nature sometimes. Like I love the beach and I love the parks, but it is a little bit manufactured and manicured and sometimes I just want to be in a forest or by the mountains. So I miss that, but Dubai is a hub so you can always travel to other places. And then the last thing I think, the business culture, I think it's not exactly my style, but I've, I've gotten used to it. Um, but it's a newer country, so I can't expect it to be up to par with the New Yorks and the Londons and the Torontos just yet. It's, it's still a newer growing city. So. What are you currently doing in Dubai? I am currently the owner of a small digital marketing agency. So I started it about a year ago as just myself and some freelancers. And I've now brought on another person full time. So we're a team of two and we work with SMEs in Dubai, uh, specifically service-based businesses, and we do lead generation campaigns for them uh, via social media. How did you start your agency? I am fortunate that I came here with my husband and I was on a housewife visa. So on that housewife visa, if you have an NOC, so a non, no objection certificate, you can work as a freelancer with certain companies. So that's how I was sort of trying out my business idea by seeing if I could scale it up into an agency. So I did that for a year on a housewife visa and when I was getting enough business and clients I figured okay now I can license it and be a proper business. Can you tell us more about the license? Yeah. So I got my license from Raquez which is a Russell Khema free zone and they had a special business women package. So I actually got a great deal and I just paid 6,000 dirhams for a yearly license to run a marketing agency. And luckily, since I don't need a visa, I didn't have to pay that cost. And my employee doesn't need a visa. Um, she's a young grad whose family is here, so I don't have to spend on her visa either. So yeah, worked out well. What challenges did you face with setting up your company? To be honest, it wasn't that challenging. Um, it, I think it really depends on what you're doing. I know it must be harder for people who are maybe setting up like a cafe or a restaurant or something that's more labor intensive and a logistical nightmare. But for me, all I need is a laptop and a cell phone. So I don't really have very high overhead. I work out of a co-working space. It's me and my employee. So. It just wasn't that difficult. Um, I found a great co-working space through IN5, which is government subsidized, and it's only a thousand dirhams for the year. And it's a beautiful, amazing space with meeting rooms, conference rooms, workshops. It's gorgeous, and I love working out of there, so that was great. I think the only difficulty I had was perhaps um, finding one place for information you know like when trying to figure out how to set up it wasn't very clear-cut there were just a lot of there's lots of different information everywhere so I just had to talk to a couple of people to figure it out and a tip I would have for your viewers too is try not to go to a brokerage for a license because they will charge a very high markup on top so I went to someone first who sort of brokered deals with free zones and I think it was close to 20-22 thousand dirhams that I was quoted and then when I went to the free zone itself to Rakas they're like no it's 6 thousand dirhams like, okay this is cheaper so that's something people should keep an eye out for if you had to start over again what would you do differently honestly I think I did okay <laughs> is that bad to say um, you know but one thing I would caution people against and I didn't do this but I think I saw enough people doing this luckily that I didn't do it <laughs> um, which is investing into an expensive license before you even know that your business idea works so there's some people who haven't even started yet and they will just spend very heavily on the licensing and getting an office and um, building like a really fancy website that's another thing too often I see entrepreneurs just spend a lot of money on the upfront without actually just doing the work 
and seeing that your business model is working. So in a past life, I had done something like that in Canada. Um, but over here, I just, yeah, housewife visa. I did it for a year, freelanced, kept my costs super low, worked from home until there was good enough money coming through the door that bit by bit I invested. And I just, I've still kept my overhead down. So if you can keep your overhead down, that's what I would say. What does your daily life look like? My daily life, um, right now I wake up, try to be early around 6.30, but usually be somewhere between 6.30 and 7. Um, I'll head over to In5 and get here for around between 8 or 9. And then I work till about 4 to beat traffic. But honestly, most days I usually have meetings as well. So I'll be at the office for a bit and then sometimes go to a client meeting and then work out of a cafe for a little bit. Um, go home. I do a boot camp in the evening, so I work out. How do you spend your free time and weekends? Free time, I am involved in the theater and improv community over here. So I take part in some plays. Um, I'm in an upcoming improv play, I guess you could say as well, improv musical. It's like, it's called Bollywood Improv. We put together a Bollywood movie on the spot, so it's kind of fun. I try to be outdoors as much as I can in this weather. So I go by the beach, to the park. If your friend was planning to move to Dubai, what is the minimum budget would you advise him to have? It's like an it depends answer because it depends if you're living solo or if you are going to live with a spouse who's also working. It depends if you have kids and you're coming here. So it's very different per person, but I would say, let's say if you're in my situation, which is no kids, but dual income, um, I would say minimum, minimum, and you want to live like a, you know, you're not penny pinching and you want like a decent lifestyle. It's like 10 to 15 thousand there. It's like 12 to 15 thousand there, I would say. Can you share your tips to make savings here? My biggest tip, which people will not like probably, but, and I think is sometimes tricky to do because Dubai is a place of temptation. I would say live beneath your means with everything. It is very easy to not save over here, but it's also very easy to save if you just let go of the need to keep comparing with others and wanting the newest and the fanciest of everything. So buy a used car, um, live in an apartment that's beneath your means, um, which will allow you to save a bit more. You know, you don't have to live in the fanciest beachfront apartment. Don't do so many expensive brunches on the weekends. There's like a big brunch culture over here. Um, minimize your time in shopping malls, honestly, because shopping, can, it, it's there's such good deals on all the time over here. I think it's very easy to just rack up that those expenses or that debt. So try to do activities that don't involve money all the time too. That's also another reason I got into theater and improv because you're not spending money, you're just, you're having fun, you're doing something creative, you're meeting people, you're making new friends. What has this international move taught you? I've lived all over the world and always been traveling. So I think in each situation, I, I think I have become more and more adaptable um, as I've moved across the cities. But I think Dubai has again been a reminder that you can, you have to adapt to the culture of where you are living in. I did become a little set in my ways in Canada as well and you just, instead of getting enraged or angry about, oh, things aren't done the way they're done back home, you just have to breathe and accept with open arms the culture that you are in and learn to adapt to that culture. Um, and it sort of brings a certain sense of humility as well back to you. So I think that's what this move to Dubai has brought back to me. If you were to describe your experience as an expert in three words, what would that be? I would say it's been fun. I'd say it is definitely a little bit challenging at times. Um, and I don't know if this is the right word in this context, but I'd just say it's got a lot of opportunity. This is still a very new growing city compared to more saturated markets from London or New York, etc. So it's much easier to stand out here and there really is a lot more opportunity for growth. So that's what I've personally found as well. I think I'm more of a big fish in a smaller pond versus a small fish in a big pond in Canada. So I'm enjoying that. 
Do you have any quote you live your life by or think of often? I don't have one quote or anything in particular that I live by. There's many quotes that resonate with me, but I think if you're someone like me who sometimes has so much going on in their head and like a big task list or you start panicking about something, what I just like to ask myself is, is the world going to end? Like if this thing doesn't get done, like is it the end of the world? And the answer is usually no. Okay, go home, sleep, see your friends. I think just reminding yourself how insignificant you really are and what you do is in the grand scheme of things takes that pressure off and allows you to just relax and be less serious. So actually I think I would sum it up as don't be so serious. It's chill. That helps. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions to Alina, leave them in the comments below. We'll reply to you. Also, you can get in touch with her on Instagram. The link is in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you will not miss my next episode. See you soon.